Hello and welcome to Fletching South, the best bits today, live from White Hart Lane, ahead of Spurs versus Liverpool. It's a good day to have a beer. We had former Derby in Sheffield United manager Nigel Clough and an interview with Gareth Bale. Lots and lots of discussion about the new Liverpool manager, Jurgen Klopp. Enjoy. Enjoy. You know, I was sad the fact uh, of the circumstances why Brendan Rodgers went, but I think Jurgen Klopp is, a, you know, is an excellent replacement. It's exciting. I mean, I don't go... I think the newspapers and everybody else has gone far too overboard and everything. It's been, I think it's been ridiculous. And I'm We're about to, to do the same for the next no, two no, hours. No, 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 no. I'm looking forward to it, the actual watching the football yeah, yeah. and settling down. But it's not going to be you know, easy for them. Liverpool are in a transitional period and they've got injuries and they've had more injuries this week, so it's going to be very hard for them. So let's just give them time and let them get settled into the job. He's only had a couple of training sessions with the lads. But I think we've gone far too too overboard. You know, what you the say there, sad to the circumstances of Brendan Rodgers. What? Well, I just think that I, I think to to sack him after eight Premier League games, um, and also, well, let let's be honest, the bandwagon was rolling after four Premier League games to sack him. I think it was the wrong. I think it was the wrong time. I think last year he could have been sacked, Robbie, when they lost four one at Palace and six one to Stoke. That was an appalling end of the season. Yeah. Steven Gerrard going, backroom staff going. It could have happened then. But I think once you give him yeah. the summer yeah. and give him all the money to sign all his new players, you cannot sack him after three and four games. What kind of players does does Klopp like within his team? What's he looking for when he puts his team together? Well, one of the first things he did at Dortmund, he got rid of the two best players in the team, in um, Mladen Petric, playmaker, and Fry, the, the Swiss striker, you might remember him. He won't need to do that because Brendan Rodgers has already done that with Stephen <laughs> Gerrard and Suarez, so they're because, a step ahead of that Because now. they didn't fit his system. And I think also personality-wise, they weren't quite ready to buy into his game. Now, I don't think he's going to be quite as drastic in his first few months at Liverpool, but I think it shows you that this guy values teamwork and collective tactical approach over individual class. So even when it comes to the point of getting rid of huge fan favourites like these two guys were at Dortmund, he did it. And effectively, you know, the great Dortmund team that we talk about, they weren't a great team when he took over. Nobody knew these guys, they got them very cheap, and he made them so much better collectively because the team worked. If you're bringing in, you know, from outside as a foreigner, you're bringing in your own staff, then you need to identify someone in there that knows the players, the character, the, the culture of the club. He'll have, a, he'll have a look from outside of the club and he'll think what Liverpool Football Club is about. But he needs somebody in there directly. Whether that would be Kenny Dalglish, I don't know, but it, they needs, he needs somebody to sit down with. But for me, it's like, Harry, you go in there and you, you communicate. Your first port of call is to communicate. You know you're going to get a surge of motivation from players. You know, the players that are not in the team fancy their chances now. The ones that were in the team mm -hmm. and the, the other manager fancied, they've now got to prove themselves. So you know you're going to get that, but it's really get the ball out and get the, the language of football going and, and put your ideas across. He hasn't had that much time, obviously, with the international uh, week. He's had two days to do that. He hasn't got a Stevie Gerrard. He hasn't got people that are steeped no. in Liverpool tradition there, mm -hmm. or Liverpool lads or, who live for the club and Gerrard's been through it, you know, mm -hmm. or Carragher's gone. You know, is, there's no one really I can look at at the moment and, and think mm -hmm. they're really going to be give them a real heads up about, you know, what the club is about, almost. I think that's why it's a bigger job than most people perceive at the moment, because it's a big change, it's a big point in Liverpool's history now, you know, how much they're going to change, how much time they're going to give him to turn it round, bring his, his ideas in and everything. Is it going to be a completely different change to what we've seen in Liverpool recently? I'm sure you're, you're aware of, of all the excitement about Jurgen Klopp coming to the Premier League. Does it make England's top league stronger now? Um, it just shows the calibre of the league, I suppose. It's... Uh... It's probably the strongest league from, from number one to, to number 20, I think. In many other leagues it's difficult to, for the bottom team to beat the top team, but in the Premier League it seems to be very, uh, very strong all the way through. As you can see, Chelsea haven't had the best of starts and they're the champions. So, um, yeah, it's an exciting league to watch and I'm sure that's why it attracts a, a lot of people, a lot of managers, a lot of players to, to the league. Manchester United did try to sign me. The bid at, at the final stage got to 4.5 million, which at the time would have been the British transfer record. I was aware of this through Trevor Francis. He showed me this uh, on the facts uh, before telling me he was going to send one back saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not for sale. To which point he left the room with me dragging him by the leg, sort of kicking and screaming, saying, no, you, you've got to let this go through. I didn't sign for Manchester United. But there was a certain unknown footballer that they did sign, a certain guy called Eric Cantona. Manchester United fans owe me a lot of uh, favours. And in case you're wondering how things are at Manchester United, I think Louis 
got the key to it all now. Blame the chef. I mean, what's what's football coming to? <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I, just, I can't take these stories seriously. I don't know whether that's a joke or not, you see. What he said, Steve, the, the, the crux of it is, he's saying that the chef plays an important role because he sets the tempo within the, the training <laughs> ground. The with, yeah, still, yeah, with yeah, the food, yeah. you know. He's the one who presses up front. That's what he's saying. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I he mean, sets yeah, the tempo. As long as the, as long as the food's great, uh, what's, the, what's the problem? I'm, I'm told I mean, that I he can't sets the tempo because you're not allowed to eat until he sits, he sits down. down. Really? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. So he's, he's the one who sets, you know, all the food. So if it, you know, it's down, to, it's down to him to do it. But you can't blame the poor chef. The poor chef's had his picture in the paper. So That's all he needs. If Van Gaal doesn't get in there till like one, two o'clock, the players cannot eat until he sits down. Apparently so. Yeah. And, thought, and Bayern Munich players got in trouble. Luca Toni, World Cup winner, had his ear pulled by Van Gaal in front of the whole team. <laughs> his ear because pulled. He, yeah. Because he started too early and also. He was slumping, he didn't sit up right. Really? <laughs> yeah. When I made my debut, I just felt like it was a normal game. Um, I didn't really change anything or I didn't change how I felt. Obviously it was a huge step up, there was 10 times more people at that game than at our 21s games, but a little bit I nervous at the start, but once yeah. you get into it, you're, you're fine. That man should be the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are yes. you doing at the moment, Nigel? Uh, not an awful lot. No. Uh, looking for a job and uh, no, spend some time with the family and getting to do one or two things you don't get time to do when you're a manager. You're ready, ready now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. Yeah. You're ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't feel uh, it's nice to have a rest, an enforced rest. I didn't really think we needed it. No, but, I don't either. Sheffield United, wasn't it? Obviously, yeah. done so yeah, well yeah. there. Ah, what was he like to manage? Uh, Honestly, yeah, we'd never <laughs> met him. We never met him before we went in at Derby, and you look from the outside and you think. Hold on a minute, this could be a problem. I think he was being bombed out a little bit. But to be fair to him, we knew there was a good thing in terms of Martin O'Neill and John Robson had put up with him for a few years. And if he was that bad, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have done. Uh, but to be fair to him, when we got in there, all he wanted to do was train and play. And I can count the number of times on one hand he missed training in a few years. And all he wanted to do was play. And, I shouldn't say this in front of him, he was a better player than people give him credit for as well. Oh, no! 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 Go on, Gaffer! Oh, he was a little bit better, honestly, he was. <laughs> little no, not a lot, a little bit. <laughs> he, was better, he was better than people gave him credit for. That's all for Fletch and Sav this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Keep tweeting into at Fletch and Sav in the week, and we'll see you next Saturday from 10am. <laughs>